know nobody believed me, but I knew you'd come back. Because my dad promised me. The Bible says the Lord spake to all your assembly in the mount of the midst of the fire of cloud and of the thick darkness with a great voice, and he added no more. And he wrote them tables of stone and delivered them. You need to remember, too, as you study the Bible, the book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. So many things start here, and then the theme is carried throughout the Scripture. But what you get here is what's called the Law of First Mention. And the Law of First Mention is a good thing to study the Bible by. Uh, in other words, the first time it's mentioned in Scripture, look at the context, how it's used, where it's located, and you'll find that the Bible then continues on with that throughout Scripture. If you look at chapter number 2 of Genesis, down verse number 8, the Bible says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he'd formed. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Lord bless this holy book now. In your name I pray, man. I preach this message to you today and may God use it for whatever purpose he intends to use it. For it's not me, it's the word you've begotten by the word. The man that uh, preached and you were saved under his ministry so does not change the fact that you're begotten by the word, not by the man. But the scripture talks about Eden. There's two gardens I want to preach to you about this morning. I want to preach about Eden and Gethsemane. There's another garden over there in the Song of Solomon. It's a beautiful thing. And the bride with her love. What I want to talk to you about this morning is the reason God put you here. Here's the reason. The Bible said God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and he became a living soul. The wording's important. He made his body from dirt. He breathed into him the breath of life and he became a living soul. Some things are said about man that's not said about anything else. First of all, God breathed breathed into that man. That meant that something came up from inside God. It came up from him and went into the man. Therefore, God put something in the man that he did not put in anything else on this earth. The scripture says man became a living soul. If you do a little research in the Bible, I think you might find that nowhere says that angels have souls. Think about that for a moment. Because it is with the soul that you commune with God. The reason you do is because it is from God you receive your soul and you return into his soul. And there's a place in the heart of God and the soul of God that only a man can speak to and can touch and can reside in. And that's what this is about, folks. It's not about right and wrong. Do this, do that. Don't do this, don't do that. You can get into the letter of the law and you can carry that burden till you die and never have fellowship with God. It's not to put it down to denigrate what's right and wrong, not at all, but put them in their right place. Everything must be in its right place. First place is your relationship with God and your relationship with God is not built on what you do. It's built on who you are and who he is to you and who you are to him. That's the most wonderful thing that you can have in this world, and that is the relationship with him. The Bible says in the Garden of Eden, the word Eden means delight, the Garden of Delight. This is where it all started, folks. Keep in mind that when God made Adam, he put him in a garden to dress it and to keep it. He wanted communion with him, for the Bible said they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Chapter 3 and verse number 8, and Adam and his wife hid themselves. Oh, how much it cost them when they had sinned against the Lord. Heaven is a place, my dear friend, street of gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl, and all of that, that's one thing. But my dear friend, that's not communion with God. Heaven will be a place where you will know God in a sense you've never known Him here. He'll live in your heart in a way that you've never known Him. Wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be wonderful if God began to reveal His mind to you? Wouldn't that be something if in the heart of God, walking in His very soul, He in your soul, you in His soul, that the mind of God begins to open up to you and the very heart of the Creator? My friend, that's heaven. Make no mistake about it. That's a place that I desire to see one day, according to the scriptures. But that's what awaits you. The apostle said, I have a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far greater. Noah, Daniel, and Job are mentioned in the Bible as three individuals whose righteousness is called forth for you to understand. Noah, Daniel, and Job. We had a lot of other righteous men. I mean, look at Moses and the rest of them, David and so forth. But not them. They're not included in these three. Why? Righteousness in the Old Testament has to do with right standing with God. It has to do with the mind of God, the holiness of God, the spirit of God, the will of God. And my friend, that's what's important for us today. Did you know that your soul is intellect, emotion, and will? Do you understand that? Do you realize how important your will is? We 
call it volition. Choices that you make. You make them every day. You made choices today. You made choices. You choose. Choose you this day. You're not an automaton. You're, you're not an AI robot. You're not something that's been made to serve man. No, 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 no. God made you for himself. And the more you know of him, the more you're going to rejoice. Amen. It's a wonderful thing. The Bible said in the book of Psalm 103 that the ways of God were revealed to Moses. The children of Israel, they saw what he was doing, but Moses began to realize why he was doing it, where it was going to be done. These are the kind of things that give meaning to life, doesn't it? I mean, the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The towers fall on the good and they fall on the bad. Amen. I mean, if all you judge your life by is all the junk you see around you, I don't blame you for being despondent and full of depression today and have no desire to live. You've got to be able to see through it and see past it and see a reason, a purpose, something higher than what you're living in. The Bible said in Exodus chapter number 33, verse 13, Moses said, Lord, show me thy way. I want to know your way. That's a wise man because he's leading the children of Israel. They've been in bondage 400 years. They've been slaves. They didn't know anything. All they knew was to serve Pharaoh. Pharaoh's slaves. Oh, wasn't Pharaoh great. I went to Egypt one time and saw a huge statue. It was inside a building, and we stood up on the second tier and walked around and looked down at this huge, I mean, I'm telling you folks, 60, 70 feet long, something like that, of Ramses. Where's Ramses now? Amen. Where are the kingdoms of the world? Where are they? Where are they now? They're gone. They're in the dust pile of history. But that Lord Jesus Christ that lived 2,000 years ago, he's more alive every day in your soul than you could ever know. The Bible said in Psalm 25 and verse number 4, Show me thy ways, Lord. I want to know your way. The Bible said in Romans 11, verse number 33, The ways of the Lord are past finding out. The Bible said, Search me and know me and try me. You know something, folks? Canst thou by searching find out God? Can't find him. Don't know look for him. He has to come to you, reveal himself to you. The book of Exodus chapter number 20 and verse number 21, a remarkable thing happened. They were brought out of Egypt in there 400 years. Now they're facing a real God, not the gods of the Egyptians, a bunch of demons created in the image of man. Man creates them in his own image and his nightmares and, and his demon possession. He, cry, he, he carves out his gods in wood and stone. But now they're about to come face to face with a real God. Amen. The God that judged all their gods. They're about to come face to face with him. You know what he did? He came down upon that mountain in thick darkness. The Bible said in Genesis 1, And there was darkness upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Darkness. He said, Let there be light. That's not the sun. That's a greater light than the sun. That's a light, my dear friend, that came forth from the command of God. Has you ever had that light shine in your soul? Lord, shine on me. That's a beautiful thing. It's awful to be in darkness, isn't it? I'm talking about total darkness. Did you know a man can't stand that? They've already done enough psychological evaluations of it. You get into total darkness, and he's going to go off the deep end. Nothing to relate to, nothing to see, nothing to understand. Total, absolute darkness. But my dear friend, without God, that's all there is. If you ever had the Holy Ghost move on your soul and breathe into you and move you toward the light, move you toward the light. Wasn't that a wonderful day? He led you. He led you. <laughs> he moved you toward the light. And here you go. And you're like a child. You know, you don't know what to expect. But you, you can't stop because that light keeps drawing you. It's dark in this world, dry bones, but the breath is where their life came from. Oh well, yeah, he didn't breathe onto plants, he didn't breathe into animals, but he breathed into the man. Dry bones, the breath of God, brought them out of darkness and death. The soul is a spiritual entity, yes, but it is not the spirit. The soul is not subject to physical, carnal death. The soul is who you are. You're listening to me right now. Your soul is taking the words that I'm preaching to you considering them, your will, your intellect, your emotion. You can respond. You can think. You live in a generation of ignorance today, folks. I mean ignorance on steroids, believe me. They are ignorant. They are, they are ignorant as you can be. When it comes to spiritual things, the things of God, there's a darkness out there. The darkness can come into your life. Darkness can come in such a way, and why does it do that? Because God's in the darkness. That's why he's in it. The Bible said here in the book of 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 9, There was nothing in the ark save the two tables of stone which Moses put there at Horeb. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt, and it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place, the cloud filled the house of the Lord. So the priests could not stand a minister because of the cloud. There's a lot of difference between those priests and Moses. When the darkness showed up, they ran. When the darkness showed up, Moses walked into it. Big difference. And you can make that choice today because it's going to get dark. God knows. Where's the Lord? He's in the darkness. That's where he is. That's where he is. He's in the thick darkness. 
He's where you can't see him. You can't feel him. You can't touch him. You can't hear him. But if you walk in there, he'll find you. One of the things about thick darkness is that you feel lost, or you are lost. Did you know that a sheep of all the animals on this earth has no sense of direction? None. You can take a sheep a couple of hills over from where its flock is grazing, and it's lost. It can't find its way back. It must have human direction. In this case, the direction of God. Don't run from the darkness. Don't hide in the darkness. Walk in the darkness, and he'll meet you. Gotta say God bless you.